Okay, welcome everybody to the Open Source Ecology Human Resources, the meeting on team development. So this is Richard and Marchin here. Main agenda for, for today is the, um, so there's a couple of things. So as we get people on board the team, there's a few things of infrastructure that we really need. Uh, we're building teams actively right now is the overview. Um, goal being, um, think about it as a kind of like a tribe, a developer tribe, people who all walk along the same path with a common goal of uh, um, making these open enterprises happen. So the idea is anyone who's interested in this project is a very tangible way where you can get involved, not only in just development, but eventually in terms of livelihood creation, which is a long-term goal of open source ecology, uh, we're encouraging people who, who would consider uh, open source product development, a real real participation in creating the next economy, which I think is the open source economy. As things get more efficient, I don't think you can get any more efficient than uh, actually working openly. That means truly building upon people's work. That's the idea here. Um, so along those lines of that kind of culture, we're we're trying to get people on board to that. So the main place to look at right now is the OSC developer page on the wiki. If you want to take a, um, take a look at the invitation. Uh, so we've got the invitation out. We're currently posting that. Um, we're working on an announcement for OSC developers in particular. We, we posted some announcements on uh, the HR generalist, which right now we have Richard and training on the, on that on that work. Uh, we definitely could use more people on the team, so please apply. Okay, so for today, let's go over the couple main things that help us work together. And one is just a welcome orientation email, so we're working on that. And second is the live. USB, so live USB of OSC Linux. So that means we all have the common software that we use. It's based largely around FreeCAD, but FreeCAD has a lot of different extensions. So what we do is we install all the software that we use onto this live USB. It's a thing that does that basically you download the operating system and you put it on a USB drive. That's it. Then without interfering with your regular computer in any way whatsoever, you can run this OSC Linux with all the software included up to, I mean, including things like, for example, after we develop the, the 3D printer, we would put all those files as library files on the official release so that, say, you want to download all the documentation, instructionals, or the CAD files, you'll have it all in one place. So we can actually create a Linux version with all those pieces of software um, readily available for anyone to use readily. So it'll just facilitate development. I know that um, on the Linux part, why we want everybody using the same system that's turnkey so that we just eliminate tons and tons of computer issues. I mean, right now with a small team, that's not so big, but already we've seen how people couldn't download things or make things work. So that's a really big concept for how we do that, so, um, how we work more seamlessly as a large group. So we're building teams. Our goal is 12 teams of 12 pairs within a year. So nominally about a, a person, one or two people recruited per week. Uh, that's a goal. At two people per week, that gets you 100 people after one year, about 50 weeks times two. So that's the kind of math we got to reach up to um, and then collaborate seamlessly on the current projects which means that we have to orient people readily on the project so we started an orientation email basically the welcome to the team open sourcer email which we're working on right now so the two main things is is that um, the welcome email the live usb and a third is the well, we got to post the, the announcement for the OSC developers, a formal announcement. We haven't posted that. we kind of been a uh, little lower brow on that, just going through the social networks so far. Um, let's see, what else is to be said as an introduction? I would say just one more thing. I think that um, 
as a matter of strategy for development in the open source framework, I think it's good to work with existing projects that already have developers who are already familiar with open source ways. So things like FreeCAD. Uh, FreeCAD, so we're actually inviting Javier, who's the uh, Exploded Parts Animation Workbench guy. He, he developed that. We're going to have, in, we invited him for next week, so he should be appearing. But basically, it's good to invite various people to our meetings as kind of consult to us to help us learn new skills. So the Monday meeting, we'd like to have where we have a little bit of intro and theory and, and skills learning and then getting into the division of the tasks for that week. So that would be a good, good paradigm. But one thing for we talk about HR, I think, uh, Richard, as we go forward on that, one, p one point of strategy would be to, uh, onto the plate of that role, add the idea that maybe, and yeah, I mean, we got to post the postings on the OSC developers, but the people who we invite to our meetings could be very valuable because that will lead us directly into getting um, an instructional. So, so in a mon Monday meeting, we can get a brief intro to something, then we can work on a more in-depth instructional and then a really high quality super short video like our two free cut videos which are each like five minutes long so that's kind of how I would, would see that going so uh, with that said uh, we can get working on um, Richard anything to add as far as priorities because I was what I was doing is going over the w intro email and I still got to write the OSC dev um, Dev part right now is this week. I was working on getting the 3D printer up and running, so I just posted a video on that. Um, on Minds, if you look at that, or the Facebook, but um, yeah, that thing is coming together. Really excited about that for the first workshop. On, on uh, so just to show you that uh, putting the electronics, making the, the axes move, but that's uh, that's our baby right there. Um, so Richard, um, should we dive into the what? Anything else to to add, Richard? Okay. Can you speak up? Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can hear. Okay. Um, yeah. So the bulk of my time this week was spent on the email, and then also. On the uh, the download of the Ubuntu, and yeah, I think those are the things that we should, you yeah. know, really get fine tuned. Nail it, yeah. So, you know, once people come on board, the email is clear. It you know directs them like where to go. They know how we operate. They know what to expect. Um, and then, and then they're able to download the. The operating system that's loaded with the software. And, yeah. And I think once we kind of get that um, fine-tuned, it's it's we have a, a good instructional. It becomes easy to understand. You know, at least they, they know um you know where to go and what to do. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the first thing. So that you know once we're onboarding people, um, you know that that it, uh, it's kind of efficient. Where you know there's just one email, one you know that point of contact, and then from there. They kind of they know what to do, so there's not all these emails back and forth between you and them. Like, oh, you know, like what do I do now. And I saw a couple of emails there from some of the people. Like, they're you know expecting uh, even some of the people before they finish the CAD test are kind of asking like, oh, do I have an assignment yet? Like things like that. So yeah, I think as we uh, mm -hmm. go forward, um, that kind of communication will move things along and then free you up from having to. You know, manage everyone where you know they kind of refer to the email to sort of know what the next step is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I try to make it. Um, you know, I, I try to put everything in there so that they know, you know, how to log their time, or you know, the timesheet is in there. A yeah. Link for that. Uh, yeah. A, you know, their log. Um, yeah, take a look at this. And then, uh, you know, I kind of want to go over the fine points because I know there's a, uh, I think there's a video somewhere that shows how to, how to log and fill in the timesheet. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to understand. It's kind of self-explanatory, but um, you know, like just stuff on like how to edit the wiki. Um, yeah, we could get instructional videos on that kind of stuff. I think that would go a long way. 
Um, okay, so I guess uh, let's go to the. Uh, let's see. Um, getting real, real solid feedback there. Let's see. Is this any better? Can you hear me well, or is it you get a lot of feedback? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, let's click on the link. So I, I was editing the email, not in the doc, but just right on the wiki. So I think we should go to. Right. So as we go to HR log. Uh, I think the priority would be for this meeting. Let's kind of regroup, reorganize here. Let me share the share the desktop. Uh, okay. Let me go. Let me go to here. Oops. Reopen. I think the video after. After we do the email, yeah, that would kind of summarize everything like a quick, quick five minute or a few minute thing where you can really blast through that and maybe like even replay that for yourself. But we have to make it super tight. Um, I'm going to mute you here. Okay. Yeah, I think if we make that. Yeah. It's yeah, it's all about kind of like gradients of quality here. But yeah, the email we should you know we should uh, finish that and then keep refining it to keep it make it more clear and tighten it up. But yeah, do look at that uh, in the link that I put in the chat box. And then I guess you mentioned the video. Yeah, that would be quite useful. Let's let's put a note of that uh, March seventh. So we're keeping our HR log. You can watch all the former videos. Uh, so we're documenting that for who anyone, anyone who joins. Tuesday, March 6th. So that was Feb 2017. So I, yeah, I, would, I do like the idea of add the um, intro video, welcome video. Which would be a very tightly edited, yeah. That would take a little bit of time. It's a tight edit of the critical assets and like really refined, like really that would um, of the key things to know to get that really good. Yeah, it takes really aggressive trimming of a video. So that would take. I mean, that's gonna take to do it right. I mean, that would take. Um, could take 10 hours to do that it's a <laughs> to do it like really nice and tight take a bit of time um, which makes me think um, I mean we can start with a really rough one but then the idea would be um, if we can dump all the content like I could do a video that's that's rough and then the fine editing I mean if we could pass that on to somebody else that would be uh, pretty good because kind of makes me think that um, uh, in terms of strategy so then we I think we should add the SME subject matter expert recruit to the Monday meeting so we're going to start that with Javier on Exploded Part Animations next Monday. But I think we should, um, like once you get your workflow down, kind of look at some of the critical needs that we have right now and get somebody to the team that can do that, do a particular function. Because if we look at going back to, I'll show the, um, let me expand that a little bit here. I'm going to show the... Um, development template but the point being that within a the Monday meeting I mean we could be going on many different levels one is the technical development and now we got Jean Baptiste on the team and he's doing infographics for the event which is an enterprise asset it's like advertising for the event so it's more like enterprise than development 
but on a development template going to the to this thing right here this spider uh, look at all the things that are in there but uh, things like build video I mean here videos come typically on a build part but you can also do videos for things like the instructionals because um, in this development template this lists primarily the development steps of technology but it doesn't say uh, anything about the teaching part so in the second part in the distributed enterprise part we have all the stuff related to enterprise um, but really still not so much about um, the teaching teaching people how to collaborate so but in a overall development process like if we can include a person that uh, helps on various instructional material like really integrating the kind of like the curriculum developer to our team I think the if we talk about curriculum developer I think we kinda mean uh, I would say a video guy like video publishing guy a person who would have to know how to do video because and we can really specify that like the more tight we are on a definition who we need then the more successful we can be so we say okay Caden Live um, and some ability to do instruction, you know, instructional, someone who can take a script and then make it work. Like, even if it were to take, say, my um, real fast kind of instructional and then refine it to super tightness, you know, that would definitely help. Because, I mean, I could, uh, you know, like with a half an hour preparation, I can go through, it would take me, say, half hour to do a a rough cut of a video that would probably be like 10 minutes uh, that's because I don't have the time to make it any shorter <laughs> but that person can then take it and really refine it and make it high quality like put our intro screen and stuff like that but maybe we should uh, think about recruiting that and what I would do there would be um, if we talk about the SMEs there like um, I would say let's so SMEs and then that SME could be a Caden Live person. So we could go to the strategy being look for, um, so go on their their networks, go on the Caden Live ven venues, whatever that is. They got their forums, they got their founder, whoever. Um, so one route could be the. SME who teaches up us about Caden Live, and another one would be the actual. So, so a, you know, pr, like say the founder of Caden Live, or someone on their team. If they could join our Monday meeting, that would be awesome. You know, it builds community. But the other side would be someone who actually knows how to use Caden Live well. So they're not the founder, but they're they're a user who actually joins the development team for a more regular. Um, development process so so we could so so seek an OSE developer plus the SME from Caden Live I think that that would be a good idea because um, I'm just looking at it like you know even if it's to do this video I can put out a video like that but you know I think we gotta start thinking about the quality you know the quality control thing because I mean, I've published a lot of these videos like that already I think we kind of want to get to review all the other ones that I've had before you know like even if you know even if that person could take what we've already said during our working meetings I mean I kind of went through the whole procedure and where everything is with this email I think we should probably task this person to to actually do it from scratch like they should because uh, because then it frees me up and it also translates it through another person's viewpoint which which establishes ownership in other people so I would think that that would be a good idea so I would say put that on your list man I would say um, Caden Live make it a decent priority I mean it is a priority to do the curriculum development but I think that's a way we can move forward um, but we have to prioritize so let's let's look at the prioritize um, priorities so number one still is the welcome email 
um, and it's still the ISO. Now for ISO, remember you got J to work with. So there's J and Michael. Um, you didn't talk about contacting them, but but do you, do you get the problem statement at this point then? You gotta unmute yourself. Do you understand the Yeah, I'm asking. Yeah, I'm at, do you understand the, the live the live live USB? On USB. Um. So I yeah I, I downloaded I downloaded VirtualBox and I was able to download the Ubuntu to the VirtualBox and then I was able to run it from there. Um. But you're saying to do it through USB? Yeah. There's a distinct. Um, that's that's what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna right from there. Right. Let me, let me mute you because of the feedback again. Feedback again. Right. So the the distinction there is critical actually because um, if you do virtual box, it's still about using uh, for various reasons. You want to make it absolutely independent of running like the virtual box system because that also takes takes a little bit of time for people to explain. I think the easiest route is the USB, which is called a live USB, which doesn't you don't have to do absolutely anything to your existing system. So that like we don't have to give instructions for Linux, Windows, and Mac for how you install virtual box and so forth uh, to streamline it. But also I believe it's also faster. I think the Live USB, if you allocate all the RAM to that, it'll be super fast. I've seen it being way faster than my normal computer uh, when you do that properly. But the idea being, it's something, uh, how to explain it? You download it, you have, yeah, I think it's, there's, there's various reasons why you want to just kind of like download the whole system because at present we're planning on doing like a quarterly release of updated software packs and everything else kind of like a really ambitious update schedule so, so that every every quarter as we have a new product we would uh, fill the OSE Linux with like one one more library of designs like for example for this time around would be the 3d printer design library and things like that but and then of course the the FreeCAD and all the software that's growing on the system. As we get into new and new software, we update that constantly. So one new version of OSC Linux might have, okay, now we're adding uh, KiCad, which is electronics design to the whole pack, or we're, we're adding CadenLive and stuff. So we want to have an ambitious schedule of updates. So we don't want people, like if you run that in, in VirtualBox, you still have to... Um, I think there's going to be a limit where if, if that system gets too big, it'll, it's just not as manageable. Uh, I've, I've seen really good, I'm kind of like drawing a blank why it's critical to do the, the, IS, the ISO, but I think it's, when you look at the mechanics of that, it's simpler. You, you download that thing, you just simply shut off your computer, turn it on and boot from the, the live USB. That's the idea. Um, so which is like for example when we did the the course on on geographical information systems the gis course here like two years ago we had the live usb which which worked for for everybody um as opposed to um like what's the critical difference there um why couldn't we just run the software and people's systems. Well, if you run it, first of all, if you run it in VirtualBox, it's definitely going to be sm slower because you're you're basically doing two things. One, you're running the, like you're running your own system, and then you're running another system on on top of your system. So it's gonna get it's gonna get to performance limits. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with things like, um, so Caden Live, and FreeCAD, they get like once you get into complex stuff or projects that are more than just trivial tiny designs or videos that are getting more complex yeah you can't i don't think there's any way that would you would be able to handle that within virtualbox i think virtualbox is 
um, maybe like one program but if you're talking about a whole system now now it gets too complicated because whatever program you're gonna run you would have to get that set yeah okay here's I think the critical distinction whatever you run in VirtualBox um, it'll be like okay you download this program and um, like every new thing you'd have to download and make it run in there and you might have issues with that running so yeah easiest to me the easiest clearest I kinda have to I, I think uh, what what's really needed here is a very clear um, explanation of why why the live USB is is um, is used because because actually like y you yourself as well as like Emmanuel um, and also Jay I mean they nobody really followed the idea of going to the live USB everyone all of you wanted to do it in in um, in a virtual box which means that I'm not explaining it right and but there is I think there is a, a critical difference why we want to do that but assuming we do want to do that um, it's also something like, for example, uh, if you've got this little thumb drive, if you're, for example, doing a workshop, you can distribute that thumb drive and everyone can get immediate access without having to do any prep. So there's various reasons why you do want to do it because it's once also a physical thing that you can mail to people, for example, or if you're doing a workshop it's kind of unrealistic for everybody to download successfully and make something run in VirtualBox or whatever. Uh, I think uh, from the perspective, if, if we're just handing out the product, the software product to somebody, uh, that's the only way you could do it, like on the spot in a second. We just prepare the USB drives ourselves, you know, so there's, there's various reasons why uh, we definitely do want to go that route. Um, so with that said, is the... Um, we do want to go to the live USB. Forget it. Don't worry about the virtual box. That I mean, that's actually a, a different, a little bit of a. It's a similar idea, but it's a different story. So we got to really go to the the live USB. Um, so I'd like to have you continue on that, but but shift your your uh, quest from virtual box to the live USB, and then still get see if we can get Jay or or uh, Michael to help you out on it. Because I mean, Jay. Um, it's like for Jay, for example, yeah, let's see if we could get him on board because he's also supposed to apply as an OSE dev. But um, for him, he was also just going, okay, yeah, let's just do it in virtual box. Like, um, yeah, yeah, he, I, I don't think uh, he was clear on what we really need to do there. So, so I think you can explain it to him um, if you get a hold of him. So that's that. I think you can, uh, let's see. So, so any questions on that part there? I'm going to mute myself and unmute yourself. Uh, no, I think it's pretty clear. So, yeah, just yeah. Uh, next thing to do is to download it on USB Live and figure that figure that out. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, uh, Michael's actually in Chicago now, and um, I'm supposed to meet with him on Thursday, so I can just go over this with him, and then, you know, I'll, I'll mess with it before then, and... Yeah, and like I said, contact Jay if I need help with it. Just try and really yeah. understand this. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of have a suggestion. So as we do the welcome email, mm -hmm. um, what do you think about sending people like just the physical USB like through the mail that's already loaded with everything? And um, I was even looking at uh, some of these websites that have, you know, like the swag that you can, you know, put yeah. your logo on, and they had uh, USB drives. Um, yeah. You think that's something worth doing, trying to, like, actually just send them the the USB with, um, with well, everything loaded on it? Or well, uh, the, the way we had it right now was um, that they're supposed to download it and install it and make their USB as part of the test right so if we use that I can't uh, hear you oh uh, sorry right so in the test itself they were they're supposed to download the the ISO and make a live USB from that already so in that case that wouldn't 
um, work with that workflow. I think it. I think it's a piece of swag that we want to make available, and actually have that as a product that we sell or give away to people. And we we do a. I mean, a, the best thing that could happen there is we do like this on-demand USB production thing, where. As, and this is really kind of the, the way I'm thinking about the enterprise aspect, which is for everything that we do, you do, you give people HTML code where they can embed that in their website so we can embed that in our wiki, but other people can embed that too, and also for sale. Like if someone else wants to sell these, these things, uh, that's, I mean, that's kind of the distributive enterprise idea. We make our money-making codes available to anybody as well. I mean, for whatever that is, if you want to run a 3D printer workshop, if you want to sell a sticker or ship somebody a, a USB drive and things like that. But the, the thing there is, I'd be into that. Uh, we make that available so that we find a fulfillment place for USBs um, and get that. I mean, the way, see if we, so I want to talk about the kind of like the long-term evolution of this. We want to set it up so that uh, it's not a thing that we're adding tasks to ourselves. If we do do this, it would be good that, that we automate it fully. Like, for example, here's a, you go to the OSC site and click buy PayPal ship to you. We don't touch it. We just set it up once, you know. And that way anyone can set it up on their side. You have to fill in your banking stuff and all that. But we don't want to get it to, okay, now I'm carrying an inventory of USBs. They're outdated every quarter, you know. So this, this process would be, we'd have to make sure that whatever place we're going with the USB product fulfillment, we update that every quarter, you know, for the ne next iterations of the, the ISO. So that automation part, I think... Um, is a critical one and I'm not sure to what level it exists in a turnkey way it's something we'd have to kind of uh, do but I wouldn't I mean we can set it up so we are actually shipping this stuff but I mean it's one one of those things that unless we get established and like really get into the workflow we don't want to set up something that can collapse in the future you know like you know just a, a task that that um, we might drop so if we do do it I, I'd want to do it right that we just take the due diligence but then 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 you ask yourself the question okay so what what are the absolute priorities so maybe we could go back to um on a priorities okay what what gets done in what sequence so uh maybe let me share my screen with you again and let's let's work on on this here oh wait i am sharing sharing the screen here so you go here so what ex what are we doing so I mean we can kind of do one thing at a time so okay welcome email first uh, refine refine that um, ISO that's second um, as soon as we well then and then I would say recruit the OSC um, the Caden live SME plus team member um, post is that before post I think that's actually higher than posting the team member post um, OSC dev because because that's you kind of like they'll be like focus directed recruiting um, let me see, let me unmute you, he, un, or mute myself here so you can go ahead and talk. Or let's try if we can both talk. Uh, unmute yourself there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So... I'm going to get my uh, headphones here. I think I have headphones that can actually listen to you without echo. Let's see. Can you hear me now? Okay. 
Yeah. Um, so in this list here, does that look right? Like, is that the order of priorities? Because, I mean, we want to do... I know you're kind of jumping at this um, this swag stuff, but, I mean, that's that kind of comes down somewhere after that. Um, I mean, where would you put it? I mean, we... I think on the welcome email, the yes, ISO. I know, I'm kind of thinking that, yeah, we could do... I mean, the question is about budget. We kind of, like, not really have the money at this point, um, given that... I mean, I, I think that when we get to the regular 3D printer workshop, the the aim there is that we're getting good revenue from a regular event there but right now it's like i literally only get at this point like a thousand bucks from true fans per month um that's kind of the budget which doesn't really leave a lot of cash for uh, for sending out swag um but after april like talking about april is the first workshop may june i mean i think after after that, I'm pretty confident we we would have some revenue to if you want to send people swag like that, and that would be good. But we should but we should set up. Um, you know, I think the way we should think about it is. Uh, so yeah, we send we we create like like the best way to do it would be like say the swag pays for other swag like. Um, so we're get like always in a in a positive like if we have some sales from the swag and then once we get swag sales then we can actually allocate that cash to to sending out people's stuff uh, but i think that would be a, kind of like a cool integrated strategy where we set that up to be good and and people can click on and buy that independently and then when we get any revenue from that then we can use that revenue to fund uh, the swag for the developers i think that would be a cool idea and and that would get us to to post yeah, to to go through the due diligence of developing that that swag sales thing, which we can embed everywhere on our websites, um, you know, and we, and we kind of like really take that bold initiative of saying we're making all this kind of stuff really really acceptable to people, like we're open sourcing the designs so that anyone can sell that, you know. So because I kind of like that, I think I think the post scarcity mindset is that I mean everybody's sharing the way they can make revenue. I think. I think that's, you know, this little swag example is kind of small, but I think it shows that. And I think people will start catching on to that after some time, after they see they see enough of that. So, so I would say do this. I would say work on, a, like, for the longer term, like after we've got a... I mean, I would say we established the regular pipeline of, of developers because we're still kind of... Um, we, we got to get that and, and then in a near term not immediate term but near term develop the swag stuff you know so what are your thoughts on uh, on a swag like after after you hear me talking like this of recruiting a little bit and um, I, the conference that you had with um, was it Cameron? Yeah. He was kind of saying that um, sort of like word of mouth and, and the current yeah. team members sort of actively recruiting like while they're you know while they're still volunteering. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of the should be the focus um, that that's probably where we're going to get most of our recruits. Um so I sort of think along those lines of trying to maybe sweeten uh, them up. give the current team like um, sort of some recruiting tools. Thought that maybe by giving them, you know, I don't know, like maybe even like a business card or t-shirts, like something for them to, I don't know, just just something for them to have to sort of share the uh, the brand or the message or whatever. Um, 
you know, I was thinking like if they got the email and then they got this just this little package of like maybe like a you know laptop sticker or t shirt. Yeah. Or something like that that you yeah. know, that then they're they're gonna wear it or put it on their laptop and then you know, they have like even like a business card. Um you know, just something they can share. Yeah. Um, sticker would you know, be I don't really know good. like what kind of return we would get out of it, but I I thought it might just be something like nice to send out, like with the you know, along with the welcome email, like, Harry, like, you get some stuff, you accomplish this, you, you know, you pass the CAD test, and, um, so I don't know if that was, if that would be worth doing, I thought maybe if we set, like, a budget, like, you know, 20 bucks per person, I didn't know if that was, uh, that was doable, or if that's something we wanted to focus on, or if we just wanted, you know, like you're saying, um, you know, maybe just put it up for sale, and kind of let them, you know, maybe that, I mean, maybe that's something down the road. Maybe we should just focus on, um, like you're saying, just recruiting. Yeah, I mean, let's get. I mean, one thing uh, at a time. Let, let, let's. I would I say, let's get. Um, doing what we're doing, and then now you're saying to focus more on this. Um, Kaden Live. Are you saying? Are you thinking that the 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 swag is is good in terms of just like a good rest, good gesture, or is it a lot about people actually st that motivates them to stay on? Yeah, because I mean, right now it's like the easiest. Well, I mean, look, I mean, the logic is. What's the easiest thing on us? Because I mean, every one of these th things takes an effort, right? It's it's like whether it's you or somebody, it's actually putting ma mail and letters in the mail, or whatever. Um, so then the question is, okay, it's like what's what gives you the return? Like if we if we can do that without it, and we get still great results. I mean, I think the greatest results right now could be obtained by just going balls out on <laughs> on the. Uh, just just the recruiting part looking i mean looking at for example like the osc workshops facebook or whatever just going to all different venues and being aggressive on that so like if you say we want to do the swag do you think that actually helps people i mean which is it more like a good gesture or do you actually think that's that's good for the bottom line of okay here's our numbers growing and that's actually you know like we can actually measure that it's it's not just a good gesture it actually got these people to stay on Okay. Well, I mean, if that's if that's the case, I mean, do you think it would work to like if we talk about you or other people on a team? I mean, can you guys print that out if we get Jean Baptiste to design that, and then people can print it out locally? Because that'll be the easiest way to if you want to talk about implementing it. It will save you from sending a bunch of mail it's scalable this i mean this can this can go wild
something that they can print out. And we just put their name and put their name on the front, like you know, their name, OSC developer. Then on the back, sort of like about the organization. And so, yeah, I think something like that could go a long way. Do you um? Do you have the capacity to, to design that, just put that together, or do, you, do we give that to Jean-Baptiste? Um, and then I remember when you spoke with uh, oh. Cameron on the uh, video, you were saying that they, got, they did a lot of recruiting by just passing out flyers. Um, right. You know, I, I was looking at a couple spaces here. Um, like these maker spaces, or there's something called like a these like collaborative. Uh, what was it called? Like how? It's a um, sort of like a business space. Like maybe just going to these types of places and just uh, you know passing out flyers and recruiting people to do that. That's um, yeah. Um, I think I think that would be pretty cool. Um, so where do we get our hands on this actual, um, yeah, there's the graphics for that, so the, the card or the flyer, do you want to, would you be able to generate that or, or do we want to give this to Jean-Baptiste? How do we do this? So, I, uh, I downloaded the program that he used to um, edit the badge. I can take a crack at it, and then uh, maybe we could have him look at it or edit it. Um, okay. But yeah. Yeah, I, I think I can. Yeah. I think I can handle it. That'll be cool. So where does That'll that fit? Cool. So let's see. Um, if we talk about, we talk about the priorities, so let's look at um, here. So I would say the self-funding swag. So that means embeddable shopping basket with fulfillment. Um, that's kind of like near term and then um, but here just a flyer and postcard so does that go on so if I save this yeah if I save this here then uh, is it first it's welcome email uh, close this so welcome email ISO recruit uh, the Caden Live OSC Dev post. What is that? Flyer postcard I think is after that. Posting OSC Dev. That's oh yeah. Posting OSC Dev is the general announcement on all the on all recruiting sites on recruiting sites. So this one was. So while this is on recruiting sites, this is at the Caden Live community. So, yeah, and along with Caden Live, there's, yeah, I mean, there's GIMP. I mean, Jean Baptiste knows GIMP, but it's like we don't want to distract them t from everything. We we could get more people who are savvy on GIMP and all that if we could invite them to the. But I mean, I would if I do this kind of recruiting on this for number three, it's like you go to those communities. Where do people on GIMP hang out? Where do the Caden Life people hang out? I mean, there's those are some vibrant communities, and then then things like Blender. Um, yeah, I mean, what what do you think about that? That this whole priority list here. Okay, so by when, let's see, by when, can we attach a date to this? So maybe review this today and send it out. Send it like tomorrow. 
Yeah. It's kind of like a belated welcome email. I can get feedback on it, see what people say. I can actually ask within the email itself, it's like, how good was this email? Did it suck or did it actually help you get oriented on things? What's missing? Yeah, so we, we yeah, it's pretty much, I think, this iterative process. Just send it out and see, you know, learn more about it. And then do the ISO, so that would be like Thursday, you know. Yeah, so let's send it, send that out tomorrow. I'll I'll go through the rest of the first one, and then this. Um, you think you're gonna get to that this week, or is there time for that? Or, I mean, I think the ISO. If you s step on that, it might take your time. Um, but you know, we should be starting to post pending the posting um, on an OSC dev. I, I can write that today. So I can pass it on to you. Do, just do, finish the welcome email and do that. Do that. Um, what do you think on the timing on that? No, I, I gotta. I gotta send that to you. So I'll send it to today. You're talking about the posting on the the all the recruiting sites. You're talking about today. No, no, I I think the welcome email. I I just thought you said. It. Yeah, see what see what you can do. I mean, the email might take you a little bit of time to you know kind of nail things out. Thing is like uh, the work log video that got taken down because it was using this thing that Mozilla had and they don't use it anymore so that video it looks like it's down but beyond that I mean we've got plenty of resources. Um, do you think you could um, the, the badges themselves I mean you gotta make those up so that'll probably take you a bit of time so maybe like the welcome email it might take them. Yeah Oh, uh, you think you can handle that? Because uh, did that did that video make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. What else? Um, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of plenty of stuff to do here. So, so I mean, like the flyer postcard. I mean, if you get to that, and then the swag stuff. I mean, it's gonna take a little bit of time to to figure out. But there is the we do have the OSC sticker. That's on a that we have as far as the graphic there. So that should be good. We've got that. That's the old one, and then we have the new one from this year. But yeah, that's that might be like down down the road a, a little bit. Okay. So what else do we want to cover? So um, I think I think that's about all. So prioritize the um, there's the email and the ISO. We nail that out, and then um, start posting more and generating these other assets. Does that sound like a plan? Okay. Um, 
Also, you gotta do your log, I, uh, the timesheet actually, I didn't see you fill that out on a timesheet. I was asking about the timesheet, so make sure you're filling your timesheet. Yeah. Oh wait, let me see. Okay. And I think we probably want to remind people that probably like, let me see, because yesterday like hardly anyone had it. It's like before the meeting, it looks like people don't, they kind of, a lot of them forget about it. Um, so it would be good if, I mean, I guess maybe worry about all these things that we've got on the plate right now, but as far as the checklist of all the things that we're telling people uh, just reminding and, and checking in with people and so forth. That would be good. Um, but I guess for now, yeah, that's it's not a, not a big deal. The the person that we we're gonna need for the team, just in general, is the process manager. Like like once we get rolling, like right now, I'm kind of you know telling people to you know do this, do that. Um, the process manager should be working like they should and that's a person that we want to get sometime in the near future like once somebody from the team we have enough people on a the team then somebody can actually run the process itself to see how it um so that we don't have to be reminding them like okay do your work log or how you you know just kind of be the kind of like their big brother kind of kind of helper the well kind of like almost like the welcoming party getting people to make sure that they're doing all the stuff they understand the whole collaborative process yeah, but that'll be down the road a little bit. Yeah, I guess for now I think we're pretty good. Yeah, anything? Uh, okay, you're good for now. I think you're breaking up. Yeah, no. Uh, so are yeah, we are we good for now, then? Uh, we are we good for now? Sorry, so are we good for now then? Okay, yeah. So let's do that. We've got plenty to do. Um, yeah. So so yeah, just keep in touch. And keep it. Let's keep growing the team. Hours are rising. Things are going up. And I got the yeah. Um, the printer, some of the electronics tested, so yeah, I'm working on that. That's taking my time, but yeah, it's looking good. I think it's gonna come out really nice. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I think we can quit here. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks for the work, and we'll be in touch. Just let me know if you got any questions. Okay, thanks a lot, then. Mm -hmm. Take care. Bye-bye.